Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are in Ghostly Rich's garage here again because today is the day we are installing the lift kit on our Frontier. I did a different video showing everything it comes with. You can go check that out if you want and make sure to check out Ghostly Rich's channel too because he will have his version of this along with the front bumper that we put on in previous videos. And if you look behind the truck here in the driveway, he also has some other goodies. So go and check those out. But for now, we are going to be starting on the front of the truck. All right, now for anybody that wants to know before we lift this, we'll do a little bit of measurements here. There is new wheels coming for this truck, but as for this example, it will be back on the stock wheels. And you can see we are right at about 34 and a half, slightly under 34 and a half inches from the ground to the fender or the fender flare. And if you want to go from the middle of the wheel, this is roughly from the center or the center cap of your wheel to the fender. You're looking at about 19, 19 and a half. Rear from center cap to the fender flare, you're looking at about 21, you can see here. And from the ground, the ground you were looking at exactly 35 and a half inches. So that is where my truck sits. Gives you a little bit of a before. So once we get the front and rear done, we'll see exactly how much this kit actually lifts it. All right, so now that the wheel is off, of course we are doing the upper control arms as well as the struts. So first things first, we'll have to take the nut off to get your upper control arm off. And then once that's off, this will all drop down. Keep in mind, watch the brake line. It does have a bit of a loop in it. You have a little bit of slack, but if this thing comes crashing down to the ground, once the upper control arm's disconnected, you could break it and you don't want that to happen. So once that's off, you can see in here, there's just two small bolts on each side, one for each side of the upper control arm. And then that will literally come right off. And then your strut is the same as most cars. You have your three bolts up top and one on the bottom. And you can just shimmy the whole thing out once it's lowered. And then that is pretty much as simple as it gets for getting the front of this off. What we've done is jacked up just half of the truck. So if you come to this side, Wheel is still on the ground. Reason we're doing that is I am not getting this aligned right after we have it built. So with the wheel on the ground on that side, once we start loosening things, you don't have to worry about everything shimmying itself around. That side should hold it snug or snug-ish. We'll work on this side and vice versa once we get to the other side. All right, so what we've done is we've got the jack under the front here just slightly downwards so you got a little bit of play but that's just to catch the weight of this thing once it drops because up here first thing you got to do you have this cotter pin it'll be in that hole right there bend the back straight give it a pull yank it out if you got new ones and you can end up getting this out just snip the back off and it'll be a little easier to get out but now what we're going to do is loosen off this bolt for the upper control arm or nut Give it a couple smacks with the hammer, it should let go, and this will drop down. So, hence the jack. You don't want this thing to come crashing down, because again, you got your brake lines, you got your ABS line, everything there. So, you don't want any more pressure than it needs to be, because this does have some weight behind it. All right, once your nut is off, you gotta go to town on this thing with a hammer. If you look, you got a little bit of a thicker weld here. Same on the side. That's where you wanna aim with your hammer to try to drop this down. But being a brand new truck, you can look in there, it is nice, sealed correctly. It's tight, it's doing what it's supposed to do. So you may need a ball joint separator. Put it in here, give it a couple smacks, and it'll basically pull that bolt up and you can get them separated. But if you're lucky, give it a couple whacks here and this will drop down. All right, so you can see here, we do have it separated. What we ended up doing is we actually jacked up the bottom slightly just to make the upper control arm sit a little flatter. And then again, smack the side there, it let go. And then when you let the jack lower, the weight of this thing just pulls itself out. So that's an option if you can't get this thing out. Other option is you'll need one of them. It basically goes in between. You hit it on the end with the hammer, sledgehammer, whatever you got, 
All right, so now that we have the upper control arm disconnected, we are going to remove the whole thing. It is two 19 millimeter bolts, one on each arm there. So get a ratchet, get a wrench, get them in there. Just loosen them off, pull the bolt out, and that'll be right out of the way. And I forgot to mention the nut for the upper control arm that we took off initially is a 22 mil. So you will need a 22 mil to get that off. All right, so we removed the fender liner just to give you guys a little more of a view and a little bit more light. And because this bolt on the right hand side of your upper control arm is too long to get out, it runs into your steering shaft here. It does have a little bit of flex in it, but it does not move enough to get that bolt out. So if you have new bolts, one way you can do this, just cut it in half, it'll come off. Or what we're going to do is remove this bolt right here on your steering shaft. So make sure your steering wheel is in place so it doesn't roll around and turn on you. So lock that down, remove this bolt, and this piece should just come right out. We can stand this up and then that bolt can come out. And for future, what we would recommend is when you put these back in, put the nuts on both of the insides. Then if you ever have to remove this or mess around with it, you don't have to worry about disconnecting your driving or your steering shaft here again. All right, so we took that one bolt out and your steering shaft pops out just like that. And then you can stand it straight up and you can see the bolt is already out. It does give you enough room to get it out. So next, once we're done with that, we can put this thing back together. Again, make sure your steering wheel didn't move around too much. And then when we go to put the new upper control arms back in, the bolts are gonna go from either end. Nuts on the inside. You won't have to worry about ever taking that off again. All right, so get your upper control arm out of the way now that both the bolts are done. And if you look in here, Richard's hard at work still, but we got the steering shaft put back together because we're gonna put the bolts in the opposite way, like I said. So this is done. Now, a 14 millimeter, you can loosen off the three bolts on the top of the shock there and then we'll have to work on the bottom. But as for the top, just three 14 millimeter bolts and nuts. They're not tight, you can bust them off by hand very easily. All right, so now that the three are out of the top and we loosened off both ends of the end link here. This goes just at your front sway bar here and we took it off, reason being, one, this has to drop down in order to get that bolt out of the bottom of your shock because of course, when it's up, it lines exactly into your sway bar. So we dropped it down. Now, not only can you get that out, but when you put your new shocks back in, because it's a lift, they're gonna be slightly taller. So having that down like that gives you the room to get the higher shock in place without having to force it too much. And then when it's all said and done, you can put this back into place. Other option you have, you can disconnect both sides of your sway bar and just turn it downwards. But because we're working on one side at a time, we figured it only takes a couple seconds to get this out. It's not gonna mess with anything, so get it out of your way. Drops down easy, should be easy to get the new one in. All right, so here are the comparison between the Bilsteins and the Dobinsons. You can see, of course, it is longer. You have more spools in the spring. These are the heavy duty springs. And now keep in mind, I paid the extra to have this thing pre-built. So basically what it is, they send you the top cap, they put the spring on for you, they bolt it all down, and it comes as is, ready to go straight onto the truck. If you do not order it like this, and you have to compress it and build it yourself, they send you this sheet. And basically it shows you, X is your measurement. What they want you to measure from is the center of the hole on the bottom to the bottom piece here where the end of your spring sits you have a little bit of a slope from there to the bottom and if you look on this list there's no frontier but this nissan navara is the same measurement this is just too new of a truck it's not on the list yet and it shows 106 millimeters or 4.17 inches and now because i ordered this from them pre-built like this if you measure from here to the middle of that hole, this is 106 millimeters. They have it pre-built for you. And yes, if you have to do a little bit of adjustments, you can yourself. 
but you have to compress this and use the tool to spin this up and down. Don't try to do that while it's under pressure because you will strip the threads here and then your warranty is shot. So for me, I'm gonna put this on as it is built from them. And worst case, after I get it aligned and stuff, I can mess around with it and get it to sit exactly how I want it to sit. All right, now, before you put these in, you see how it's got the little tab here on the end? That goes in towards the truck. Like that. So it'll sit like that when it's up there. Not only does it line up the bolts, but then the bottom is sitting the right direction to bolt onto the big bolt on the bottom there as well. Okay, and she is in just like that. What we did, put come in on an angle like this, put it up, Get your nuts started on the top just to hold it from falling on your face. And then come to the bottom here and you might have to jack the jack up or down slightly just to get that around everything here. And as well what we did is we straightened or we turned the wheel slightly to the driver's side which turns this whole thing over. Gives you a little bit more room to play around with. And then you can get everything in place bolted back in and we can work on getting the new upper control arm started. All right, so here we have both the old and the new billet upper control arms. You can see on here, it's got Dobinson stamped in it on both. The other one is on that side. The Dobinson, because these things are pretty dang close when you put them side by side, it's just the bigger loop is on one end. Dobinson's goes towards the rear of the vehicle. So one other way you can tell is if you bring this over here, like I said, Dobinson's to the rear, and what it is, is when it's under here and bolted in place, you can see when you look at it like this, that there's quite a big gap here. That is because when you lift these trucks, you end up getting a lot of contact with the top here where your strut bolt's on. So what they've done is they've extended it, and of course you can extend it more with the adjustments, but that is just to give you room to clear the bucket on the top. So one last modification you have to do before putting these on, and it is in the instructions if you look at them from Dominson's, is just the front driver's side, for whatever reason, you have to grind down the metal back here. You can see we made a bit of a line. They say five millimeters. You're trying to get the metal just under where the bolt is. Reason being, I believe this is a little bit thicker and for some reason it doesn't have room to fit on that side so it needs that extra bit just to make room for this to fit in there and have room to pivot up and down. So five millimeters is all you need but we did attempt to put it in there without doing that step just to see if it would fit and it did not. So make sure you do grind that down before putting the upper control arm back in place. All right, now one last step. If you're not doing the billet upper control arms, you don't have to worry about this part, but we are, so I'm gonna show you while we're at it. This little nut and washer, or nut and bolt, I mean, and a little tiny washer there comes with the upper control arms. What that is, is this is actually a bolt threaded into this bolt. So these can be adjusted separately. What this does is it'll pinch the aluminum here when we tighten it, and it won't allow this inner bolt to loosen off on you. So once you get your measurements set, tighten that up and it'll keep everything together. And then they send these two wrenches and that is to lock these two nuts together, which in turn will stop this from being able to loosen off. Now, what they recommend is to start off with a measurement between 31 and 32 mil between the flat edge here and the flat edge there. So if you got your little caliper here, you can put it in and again, you're aiming for between 31 and 32. These things, when you're unthreading it and it's laying flat like this on the bench, it's 31. If you do one full rotation, it's 32. So pick which one you want and go with that. And keep in mind, you can't do a half turn on this because again, the little rubber bushing sticking out here has to go to the inside and the flatter one has to go to the outside. Same thing if you look on the factory one. Same idea, you're bushing on the outside, flat one on the inside. So make sure you don't do a half turn and they end up backwards, otherwise you're gonna have issues after install. All right, so now that we have our upper control arms in place, you can see we did just put the bolts in loosely and like I said, the nuts are now in towards the middle and the bolt goes in through the outside. So if you ever have to take this off or do any suspension work, you don't have to mess with your steering shaft anymore. Now, before, 
you tighten these things up and keep in mind if you don't do this you can void the warranty on the bushings on these things they want you to set up at 55 or 550 sorry millimeters or 55 centimeters and they want it from center of the hub so the middle of your hub here to your fender right here so if you come down and put that up like this you can see 55 millimeters or 55 centimeters sorry from here to center of the hub that is kind of the midway point of where these things will be operating at so if you tighten it there if it droops down it has play and when you go up it has play they want you to tighten it like that because if it's drooped all the way down or all the way up when you're sitting at normal height you're already putting pressure all the time on these things and they kind of want it to be 50 50 both ways so what they're talking about from the hub to the guard is middle of your hub to the guard we have this off just because we took the fender liner and stuff out just to get it out of our way but that is what they're talking about and it'll sit like this pretty level just put the jack under get it to 55 then you can tight tighten everything down make sure the nut on the bottom is tightened as well get your cotter pin back in and then that is it for the front all right as for the torque specs i'm going to give them all right here so if this is what you're looking for this is what you need for where we are tightening now the upper control arm bolts they are talking 94 foot pounds for the ball joint bolt they want 58 foot pounds for the three little bolts on top of your strut that's only 20 and then for the big bolt on the bottom of your strut down there where you can't see is a whopping 155 foot pounds and once you got everything torqued down of course don't forget to put your cotter pin back in the bottom it might not line up perfectly with the slots so you may have to adjust your torque just slightly either tighter or looser just to fit that in and then make sure you lock it down like Richard's trying to do because if that ever was to walk off the cotter pin is what's stopping this thing from coming completely apart while you're driving around so. all right so now that you have your upper control arm your struts all in place make sure you get your end link the little end link to the sway bar back in get that tightened up that's all good to go but one last thing you have to look at is up here these bolts we need to tighten up that just cinches the aluminum around the thread like I mentioned so it's not going to walk out on you while you're driving around now keep in mind this thing is going in for alignment in a couple of days we measured this to the 32 that they recommended and if you come and look under here it does actually hit just slightly but for myself I'm not going to be doing any crazy off road or anything this is basically just going to be driving on some flat roads until it gets aligned so once they get this and they start aligning it they're actually going to move the whole thing out a bit then they can adjust the bottom top left right all together keeps your wheels straight and there's new wheels for this truck coming on as well so once the alignment guys get a hold of this thing with all the fancy tools they can adjust it and you will be able to miss hitting the top of your bucket here with the upper control arm okay so now that we have the front done we're going to move on to the back and as you can see it's fairly simple on the back it's really only the one bolt here on each side of your leaf and then of course you have to undo these two u-bolts here and then top and bottom on the actual shock itself so what we're going to do is put a jack under here we're going to loosen off the shock and the u-bolts first which will let the axle or which will make the axle drop slightly that's why i say put a jack or something under here so it doesn't come crashing to the ground all right so the rear shock is out it's 19 mil bolt the bottom has a bolt and a nut the top the bolt is actually welded onto the frame kind of behind there i wouldn't be surprised if that's actually the head of the bolt that they welded on this side so basically what you have is the bolt off your frame goes through then you have this washer up against the bushing like so and then a nut keep those because when you put the new one on you need the washer and the nut and then on the other side there's a little bushing that's welded to the frame with the bolt 
So this will go on the one side and then the part on the frame will go on the other. All right, so once you have your shock off, you gotta start on the Leafs and it is just two U-bolts. Two U-bolts here, not on the bottom. This is the plate that goes on the bottom of the axle. This is the plate that sits on top of the leaf spring. So that is all that is hanging on or keeping your axle attached to the leafs themselves. So now all we gotta do is take out that bolt on the one end of the leafs, the bolt on this end, and this is the part you wanna be a little bit careful with because these are relatively heavy and you definitely do not wanna be dropping this on your head or your foot or you're definitely going to feel it. All right, so once you got them both loosened off, now this is where, depending on if you get the whole kit like I have, or maybe you're just changing the leafs, you will have to reuse these bolts. So the two up here, one in the top of the shackle, one that holds the leaf, you're reusing those, as well as the one on the far side. For me, ordering the whole kit, we now have the greasable bolts. So I've got a replacement for the front, and I've got the whole new shackle for the back. So I'm not gonna have to reuse this bolt and I'm also going to have to take this entire thing off, just like this. There's a plate on one side. We'll knock the bolts out. We'll have to get the bushings out of there. All right, so we have got everything out. You do have to kind of MacGyver it around a little bit to get the leafs out, but it does work. And then this is your shackle. And basically you got two of these bushings in one inside the frame, this will be up top inside the frame, the bottom ones are in the leaves. So if you come up in here, you can see that hole here is where the bushings are. The new bushings will go in here as well, just grease it up, clean it out really well first, grease it up before you put the new ones in. But being a new truck, we just were able to grab this with a pair of pliers and pull it out. It's still brand new as you can see. This is a soft rubber material, not super soft, but you can definitely mold it just with your fingers and stuff. All right, next is what we're gonna do is prep the leaf spring. So big side, you got one side with a big hole, one side with a smaller hole, big side to the front of the vehicle, small side to the rear of the vehicle. You have this stuff, all greasable, shackles, and your medium size tall bushings and your small bushings go to the rear of the vehicle. Then these fatter guys with this little spacer and those bolts go to the front of the vehicle. You wanna grease all this stuff up prior to putting it on. Don't pump the bolts full of grease just yet, but grease the outside of everything. You wanna grease in the hole here. You wanna grease the inside, the outside, and the face of all the bushings. Then just pop them in place. You might have to give them a little bit of a tap. Nice thing. If you have to tap this stuff into place after, is if you look, the little nipples for your grease fitting here actually unthread from these parts. And same goes for these bolts. You can see this actually will turn and come off of here. So if you have to smack these with a hammer or whatever to get them in for some reason, you don't bugger up the fitting to, fit, to grease these in the future. So you can just take that off, give it a smack, wiggle it around, do whatever you gotta do put it back in and you're all good to go. So grease everything up, prep it before it goes on the vehicle. All right, so Richard is doing the dirty work here and as you can see, he's getting everything prepped. Basically just grease the crap out of everything. Don't worry about getting it on the leaf. You can always wipe it off later once it's in the vehicle, but you definitely don't wanna skimp on the grease on the inside of these things. So again, grease up the inside before you put them in, grease up the bushing, both sides, squish them in, and then this is the bigger side, so you have that spacer in there, like I said. Grease that as well, push it back in, that side's ready to go. Same on this side. Grease as much as you can of everything. The more in there, the better it'll be, the longer it'll last. So again, don't worry about getting on top like we do here. You can wipe that all off once it's in place. So once you have it greased up like that, we're ready to get it in place for the vehicle. And then, same idea, we're gonna grease the middle of those. That's the end plate. You loosen the nut, that plate will come off. So we'll loosen that, put the other bushings on there, and then this whole thing, just like we took it off, will slide into place, one through the frame, one through the leaf. All right, so we have the bushings in the frame there, all greased up, ready to go. I'll show you how this sits before it all gets covered in grease because it's just too hard to film when your hands are all messy. You can see they do have an offset one way. 
So this is the way it's gonna sit. It's gonna go up with the offset pointing towards the inside of the truck. Then your grease nipples are also to the inside of the truck. So anything that might come flying off your tires or whatever are not gonna accidentally hit this and snap it off. You're gonna have the nut on the outside, so that can take a lot more beating than this little grease nipple will be able to. All right, so we have the leaf in here just loosely placed. It's hanging itself, it's not gonna drop on you. And as you can see, we have the new shackle in place as well. Again, grease the crap out of it. You're not making it look pretty, you're making it work. So grease it all up, slide it through, then we'll place this side on, to the bottom one there, and then we'll put this plate on. This is the plate for the other side. And then again, it has just one washer and one nut. We're not gonna snug it right down because of course we gotta get the rest of this all in place, but at least it's hanging and you don't have to worry about it falling down anymore. All right, so we got the Leafs in. One issue that we ran into is you cannot get it low enough to actually get it in place. So what you have to do is we decided to take the one end of the end link off and that'll allow us to drop the jack here and lower the one side of the axle down because you can see in there it's sitting too high as well as this side's got to go down and fit in the bracket right there. So being able to drop this and then it'll also be low enough to get the new shock in place once we get to that point. And then when you jack it all back up, it's in place and you can put your end link back on. All right, so the leaf is in, all the bolts are in. For this side, you have to take the little grease nipple off because that is just too long. It hurt or it runs into the side of the truck before you can get the bolt straightened to get it in. So get the bolt in, then put that back on. Get your nut on the other side. This side is pulled way forward. You can see that the plate or the uh, shackle on the end is on quite an angle. That will go away once we drop this back down and put the weight on everything. So next we're gonna get this in place with the new U-bolts and stuff. But before that point, we have to get our new shock ready. So it comes with two zap straps, one for the top, one for the bottom, just to keep the boot in place. So the shaft inside here doesn't get covered in dirt. And then Richard here has the two bushings. Now, we don't know if you're actually supposed to grease these up, but it's not gonna hurt anything. And that basically goes in the other end. And then the top will go back into the bolt that is welded to your frame. And grease, again, won't hurt anything. It'll slide on nicely. And then once you get that on, to hold the top, of course, the washer on the outside and the nut to cinch it all down in place. All right, so we have the shock in place. You can see it is in here. You have to jack this up in order to line up the hole to get that bolt back in. While you do that, it is also straightening out your leaf spring. Because now if you notice over there, that was on a harsh angle before, now it's almost straight up and down. So we know we're close. The other thing to keep in mind, where this bolt is running through all the leafs, there is a small hole in the top of the axle here where this plate is. And the other end of this bolt, there's a little nub, maybe a centimeter or so, which goes in that hole. And that in turn lines up your leaf and they sit where they should on your axle. So make sure that pops into the hole at the same time as you're jacking this up to line up your shock holes. And then it all just kind of falls into place after that. All right, so now moving on to the U-bolts. Again, like I mentioned, you reuse the plate off of the original, and if you look, it has a little hole cut out exactly the same as the plate underneath, and that is to sit on the bolt on the top here. So it goes on just like that. That will keep it in line. You see it doesn't move side to side or back and forth at all, so you know that is in line, and it'll line up with the U-bolts to the plate that goes underneath. And then as for the other side of the plate, like I said, we use our new U-bolts here. They are just slightly thicker than the OEM U-bolts that they use, just a bit. So the only thing you gotta do, get a drill bit that's a little bit bigger than the hole and ream out all four holes just so the thicker bolt can go through. All right, so now you can see the U-bolts are on. Again, the plate on top, you just line up with the top of the U-bolt. And once you have the bottom plate there drilled, you can do all that, get it all in there, put your nuts on, washer and a nut, and then this portion is the only portion right now that you can crank down tight. Do it kind of like a wheel, maybe in like a kind of an X pattern like that. 
suck it up nice and straight. Because it does have the alignment pin there, this isn't gonna move, it'll sit where it sits. So tighten it all down, we'll get the wheel back on, and then when the whole weight of the truck and the other side is done, and of course, get your sway bar back on at that point as well, then you can come back, tighten the two bolts in the back, tighten up your shock, and tighten up the one bolt here in the front, because then the weight of the truck sits this thing down, and it'll sit exactly where it should be as if you were driving. Now onto the passenger side, just to make your life easier, drop your spare tire down because it allows you to get the shackle out because of course it goes in towards the tire and the tire gets in your way. So now you can see everything's out of the way. Richard's almost got this out by himself. That's how much easier it is. So take a couple minutes, drop your spare and it'll save you a lot of headache. All right, let's give you some torque specs. The top right here of the shock is gonna be 33. The bottom is going to be 150 again. And then if we go over here, this one should be 84, the big ones. And then those two on the back are going to be 74 each. Again, don't do it now. Wait till we get the rim on. Once we have the rim on, then when we have both tires seated on the ground, we can go ahead and crank those guys down. All right guys, so we are back home in our garage now. Install is all done. Like I said, just go back through. You're just basically replacing everything you put in, retorque it down, and you're all good to go. Follow the steps in this video and you shouldn't have any problems. So you can see it is sitting pretty good. I know it's hard to see in my garage, but I'm going to do a video coming up next just with this thing outside. I just wanna drive on it for a little bit so that the springs have time to settle and get in place where they want to be so then you guys can see for sure how it looks with the stock tires on right now like i said and then in a few more days we are going to be getting the aftermarket ones and get this thing completely aligned so again just make sure depending what you take off get your control arms pretty close to where they got to go make sure your wheel's straight take it out go for a drive let go of your steering wheel if it feels like it's going relatively straight you're all right to drive on it. It's not gonna wreck anything too quickly. I don't recommend going like that forever. Get it aligned properly, but like in my case, I wanna drive around for a little bit, and then I will get the new wheels and alignment done at the same time, so stay tuned for that. But now that it is all done, I wanna get the measurements for you guys. And one thing to keep in mind, I do have the CBI front bumper, and inside this covert bumper, I also have a 10 s winch from warren the 10,000 series and a light bar doesn't weigh too much the light bar itself but it all adds up so this has probably got close to 200 pounds on the nose here so when i do the measurement on the front wheels here in a second if you do not have this bumper yours will probably be i'd say maybe a half inch or so higher so keep that in mind if you don't have anything on the front and you're just lifting it with this system you may be a half inch higher on the front compared to what I'm gonna give your measurements to right now. All right, starting with the front here, if my memory is correct, the front was at 34 and a half and the back was at 35 and a half. I'll double check that after, but that's what I'm going off of right now. So now if we go from the ground to the fender, we are at about 36 and three quarters. So we'll call it 37 just for bragging rights. So again, you may end up with a little bit more because I do have the weight of the bumper on there. So if you don't have that, you might not just gain the two and a half inches, you might gain all the way up to the three inch mark. And keep in mind the front on this system is adjustable as well. They do come pre-built from Dobinson's, but if you want that extra little bit, you can also adjust it and you'll gain just slightly more or slightly less. So whatever you're looking for, the fronts, you can adjust and get exactly what you're looking at. All right, now moving on to the back. It is a little bit dark in my garage, but we were at 35 and a half from the ground to the fender. So now get it in the center, ground to the fender. We are looking at about 38 and a half, maybe 38 and three quarters. So again, they call this a three inch lift and it is just slightly over three inches. But again, keep in mind, they have not been driven on a whole bunch yet. This will settle just slightly. So I wouldn't doubt it ends up right around the three inch mark. And 
Also keep in mind, like I mentioned, these are their heavy duty springs. They're the 800 pounders. So you're definitely gonna gain just slightly more than a softer leaf spring in the back that might not be able to hold so much weight. So keep that in mind as well. But like I said, as for this kit, you can pretty much guarantee you'll get three front and back, just like it says. So there you go guys, the lift is all done. Measurements are in, hopefully this is what you're looking for. I highly recommend these Dobbinsons. As you could probably see in this video, the install is pretty smooth. If you're doing this on your own, I would give yourself maybe six, five, six hours, depending on how good you are with tools and if you've done any of this in the past. And again, if you have an extra set of hands, it definitely helps for the back because the leaf springs are not extremely heavy, but they're awkward. It's awkward to get it around everything and out of your way. And then again, make sure you get everything aligned straight or as straight as possible before you bolt it all back down and torque it all down because you will need an alignment, but for now it's good as it is, as is, as long as you get it relatively close, you're safe to drive. But make sure you go and check out Ghostly Rich's channel as well. And hopefully if you're doing this on your own, these videos have helped you out to install this. And stay tuned because once the new wheels are on here, we're gonna do another video. We'll see how much more of a lift this truck gets with some beefier meat on there. And most of you Frontier guys know, we do probably have to end up trimming a little bit. I've already taken the front mud flaps off. They're just out of the way. I know I'm gonna need them off with the new tires anyway, so I took it out as we were doing everything. But stay tuned for that and I will get out here and do a whole walk around and show you guys out in the out in the wild with some good daylight and stuff in a couple days. But again, I just want this to settle, sit where it should be sitting and then we'll get out there in case you want to lift your truck with the stock tires and just leave it as is like mine is right now. You got an idea of what you're looking at and if you're one of the guys who wants to do this lift and you're going to add tires like I am, like and subscribe because that's coming up. So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully we catch you in the next video and hopefully this helped you out.